Okay, folks, I thought I would give you a little bit of homework help. I'm not going to give all the answers as usual, but I'm going to try to guide you in the right direction with uh, several of these. This is from assignment 13, and in the blue book, that's pages 124 to 125. And in the black book, it should be close to that. You'll, you'll be able to figure it out pretty easily. Question 16 is where we begin, and it's uh, asked a question about what the principal quantum number is. So... The principal quantum number. I wonder what that is. You know, I think I'm going to let you guys worry about that one on your own. Take a look in section two of your textbook and listen to our, to our discussions. Uh, part B says, so I guess that was part A. Part B says, how is it symbolized? Oh, I'm a nice guy. How about if I give this one to you? Isn't it symbolized? by the letter N, and that's the lowercase letter N. So there's letter B for you. Letter C says, what is a shell, or what are shells? I wonder what those are. So if you take a look at section two, it talks about shells. Shells are all the orbitals Um, within an energy level. Okay, so all, they are all the orbitals within an energy level. And then letter D asks, how does N relate to the number of electrons allowed per energy level? So how does N relate to the number of electrons? So we know that N tells us what energy level we're in, doesn't it? And as n gets bigger, what happens to the number of electrons that we can fit there? Well, let's talk about that for a second. When n equals 1, we're in the first energy level. And you know in the first energy level, there's one sublevel. It's called s. And it can hold a pair of electrons. So the first energy level can only hold two electrons. When n equals 2, you better know that there are two sublevels. s and p. Now the s can hold a p, but re, uh, a pair, excuse me. But the p sublevel has three orbitals. They can each hold a pair. So in the second energy level, I can hold a total of eight electrons. And then when we go to the third energy level, you better know that there's an s sublevel, a p sublevel, and a d sublevel. Now the D has five orbitals, the P has three orbitals, and the S has one. You can fit two electrons each. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's nine orbitals, two electrons each. I can hold 18 electrons in the third energy level. So you can see as the energy level number increases, I go from two electrons to eight electrons to 18. So I wonder if there's a little rule there that if we know the energy level number, we can figure out how many electrons it can hold. And I'll let you stew over that one. But the obvious point is, as you get uh, to a higher energy level, the electrons have more energy, so they can make bigger and neater shapes. They can go from an S to an S and a P, to an S, a P, and a D, and to an S, a P, a D, and of course, an F. Okay. That wraps up question 16. Uh, the next question is question 18 on your homework. And that says, for each of the following values of n, um, identify the number and types of sublevels possible. And it says, hint, see table number 2. So when n equals 1, it wants the number and type of sublevels. So when n equals 1, remember, we can have an s sublevel. So I can only have one sublevel. and it's an S. Letter B, N equals 2. How many sublevels can I have? You are correct. Two sublevels. What are the types? An S and a P. When N equals 3, and this will be the last one I give you, this is letter C, you better know that there are three sublevels. There's an S, a P, and a D. 
and you can do the rest of that. It asks how many um, there are, the number and type for the fourth energy level, and how many uh, sublevels are there in a seventh energy level. Yeah, the next question is number 19. So question number 19 reads, what information is given by the magnetic quantum number? Now that's the M quantum number. So what does that tell us? I'm going to let you guys do that one by yourself. Okay? Part B of number 19. That says, how many orbital orientations are possible for each of the following sublevels? An S, a P, a D, and an F. Well, I've already alluded to most of these, but let's do them anyway. How many orbitals are there for an S? Correct, only one. How many for a P? Correct, three, negative one, zero, and positive one. For a D and an F, you're on your own. You can do it. Okay, letter C. Explain and illustrate the notation for distinguishing between the different P orbitals in a sublevel. So there are three P orbitals. There's negative one, zero, and positive one, but I want you to illustrate these. So I'm going to start you off by drawing three axes. And I'll let you finish that. It's your job to illustrate and explain the three orientations of a P sublevel. And that's 19 letter C. Okay, the last question on assignment number 13 is number 22. So let's take a look and see what that asks us. It says, how many electrons can be in the following energy levels? So how many electrons can we fit when n equals 1? Well, we know there's only an s sublevel there, so we can hold two electrons only. How about when n equals 3? Well, there's an s. There are three p orbitals. And there are 5d orbitals. So we have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 2 electrons per orbital. The third energy level can hold 18 electrons. And then C, D, and E. You are on your own. I will give you a hint. Think about what the 2n squared rule will tell you. So you might want to read about that, and that might give you some help on letters C, D, and E. Okay, and that's assignment 13. That's it. How about a little bit of help for assignment 14? I'll bet you'd hate that, wouldn't you? Well, I'm going to help you with it anyway. Assignment 14 is on the same page, and it starts with number 26. And 26 reads, in your own words, explain, this is part A, the Aufbau principle. Now that's spelled A-U-F-B-A-U. -A -A and I want you to look that up on your own. The Aufbau principle. Letter B on number 26 says, explain the meaning of this principle in terms of atoms with many electrons. So make sure you not only explain it, or excuse me, define it, but make sure you explain it, okay? Next up is number 27. 27 wants you to explain or, or define Hoon's rule. That's a great rule. I want you to take the time and look that up on your own. And letter B says, what is the basis for this rule? So first of all, look it up and think about what the basis for that rule is, whatever that means. And we'll hop on to number 28. And 28 is, in your own words, state the Pauli exclusion principle. So a lot of vocabulary to start assignment 14. Okay, I want you to look that one up on your own. And then the second part of that question says, what is the significance of the spin quantum number? And that's the S quantum number. OK, 
Okay, this will take a minute, and you should be okay with number 28. I'm not too worried about those first questions. Okay, let's take a look at question number 30 now. Well, we're about a little more than 10, maybe 11 minutes into this, and we're already gotten through one assignment, and we're partway through the next one. Number 30 asks you, determine the highest occupied energy level in the following. So letter A wants the highest occupied energy level for helium. Now an easy way to do this for those is to look at your periodic table. Turns out that the period number on the periodic table, remember periods are horizontal rows, gives you the energy level that's the highest for that element. So helium is in period number one, so it only has electrons in the first energy level. That's it. Okay, letter B says, well, what about beryllium? So beryllium, if you take a look at your periodic table, is in the second period. So it has electrons not only in the first energy level, but it also has some in the second energy level. This is too easy, isn't it? And I'll do letter C for you, and we'll stop on that problem with that one. How about aluminium? So aluminium's right over here. You'll notice it's three rows from the top. It has electrons in the first energy level, the second energy level, and the third energy level. And you can do uh, D and E all by your lonesome. Okay? Let's take a look at number 32 next. Number 32 says write the electron configuration for the elements who have the following number of electrons. So A, we have three electrons. Just for the record, three electrons would be the element lithium. So its configuration would be 1s2, 2s1. Letter B. We want the element with six electrons. So six electrons would be carbon. So its configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. I'll show you quickly how I did that. 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. The next element has eight electrons. And you're on your own for that one. The next one is number 33. 33 says um, this electron configuration is given 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. So that's given to you. How many electrons are in each atom here? Well, let's see. 2 plus 2 plus 4. That's 8 electrons. That was easy. Letter B says Write the orbital notation for oxygen's electron configuration. So the orbital notation includes these lines here for each orbital. The 1s has a pair, the 2s has a pair, and remember the p sublevel has three orbitals. There's one, two, three, four electrons. So that's the orbital notation for oxygen. Letter C on number 33 says, write the, um, oh, sorry, I skipped. I just did letter C by mistake. Let's go back. This is letter B. Letter B simply says, uh, what is the atomic number? So atomic number, that's symbolized for some reason with the letter Z is 8. Okay, now let's do letter D. Sorry for the mix-up there. Letter D says, how many unpaired electrons does oxygen have? And it looks like it has two unpaired electrons. Now some might disagree and you'll say, Hummer, there are eight electrons. Eight electrons means there are four pairs. It's not true. Think about this. Isn't it possible to have eight shoes? Well, of course it's possible to have eight shoes. Everybody has eight shoes, but does that mean you have four pairs? Is it possible that three of them could be paired and you have two mismatches? That might work better with socks, but you get the idea with shoes, I hope. Okay, letter E says, what is the highest occupied energy level? And that's the second energy level for oxygen. Letter F says, how many inner electrons does oxygen have? So in the second energy level, 
There are two, four, five, six inner electrons. There are only two. Oops. And letter G says in which orbitals are those inner electrons located. And for oxygen, it's just the 1s. Okay? I think that's enough help. I'm going to let you play with the rest of assignment 14 on your own. I've done um, just about all of assignment 13 for you and about half of assignment 14. I think that's enough of a shove in the right direction. You come see me after school if you have any other questions or need some help. Alrighty? Have a great day. Bye-bye.